Hey everyone, today I'm starting a semi-regular news blurb video series to supplement the weeks that I don't create a space bite or a launch profile animation. These are intended to be quick to make and give you the needed information about one or more current topics about the International Space Station and NASA's Artemis Moon program. Today's blurb is about the naming of Northrop Grumman's NG-14 Cygnus spacecraft. On September 8th, Northrop Grumman announced it would be naming the NG-14 spacecraft after former NASA astronaut Kalpana Chawa, continuing the company's tradition of naming each of their cargo vehicles after people that play important roles in human spaceflight. Now called the SS Kalpana Chawa, this is the second vehicle named after an astronaut that was lost during the final flight of Columbia during STS-107 in 2003. Rick Husband, the commander of that seven-person crew, was chosen as the name for the OA-6 Cygnus spacecraft in 2016. Chawa was born in India on March 17, 1962. She went on to receive a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering from Punjab Engineering College in 1982. According to NASA, she then moved to the United States, earning a master's degree in aerospace engineering from the University of Texas in 1984, and then a PhD in aerospace engineering from the University of Colorado in 1988. She also had commercial pilot's licenses for single and multi-engine aircraft, seaplanes, and gliders. She was also a certified flight instructor, according to NASA. Chawla began working in NASA in 1988 as a powered lift computational fluid dynamics researcher at the Ames Research Center in California. During this time, Chawla worked to become a naturalized U.S. citizen, achieving that goal in April of 1991. She then went on to apply to be a NASA astronaut and was selected in December 1994 to be part of Group 15. She was assigned her first mission a year later, STS-87, which would see Columbia launch a six-person crew on a research flight lasting 16 days. It was during this mission that Chawla became the first woman of Indian descent to fly into space. Her second space shuttle mission came in 2003, when she and six others flew into orbit inside Columbia for STS-107, a dedicated science and research mission that saw nearly 80 experiments completed according to NASA. Sadly, her mission would end in tragedy when the spacecraft broke apart over Texas while the crew was re-entering Earth's atmosphere to return to Florida. Final contact with Columbia was lost just 16 minutes from landing. The cause ended up being a piece of insulation foam no bigger than a suitcase breaking off the orange external tank during launch and striking the orbiter's left wing, causing a hole to allow re-entry heating to begin to overwhelm the vehicle. Chawla, along with husband William McCool, David Brown, Michael Anderson, Laurel Clark, and the first Israeli astronaut Ilan Ramon were killed. Their legacy, however, lives on with NASA, her fellow astronauts, and others who work to continue the dream of expanding humanity deeper into space to gain knowledge and understanding to better our species and our planet. As of the publication of this video, the ship that now holds her name is expected to launch atop an Antares 230 Plus rocket at 226 UTC September 30th, 2020 from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island, Virginia. The NG-14 spacecraft is loaded with 3,629 kilograms of food, supplies, and experiments for the Expedition 63 and later Expedition 64 crew. It'll be the 15th spacecraft overall and the 14th to reach the ISS and the 11th in the enhanced configuration. It's also the third flight under the second commercial resupply services contract. Assuming an on-time launch, this Cygnus is expected to rendezvous with the International Space Station on October 3rd and be captured by the 17.6 meter long robotic Canadarm2 at around 9.15 UTC. Over the next several hours, the arm would then move the vehicle to just below the Unity module for berthing. Once attached, it'll remain there until about mid-December. During its time berthed, the vehicle's cargo will be unloaded. It will also be reloaded with about 3,700 kilograms of trash and unneeded equipment bound for a destructive reentry at the end of Cygnus's mission. Once SS Kalpana Chawa is unberthed, the vehicle will move to a safe distance away from the ISS. Sometime during the expected two-week freefly mission, NASA is expected to remotely perform the fifth spacecraft fire experiment, also called SAFIRE. According to NASA, these experiments study the behavior of large-scale fires and microgravity in an environment safely away from the ISS as to not endanger the $150 billion orbital research laboratory. Once all post-ISS mission objectives are completed, the vehicle will be commanded to deorbit and perform a destructive re-entry in Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. This will pave the way for the NG-15 Cygnus spacecraft to fly to the ISS sometime in the spring of 2021. Thanks for watching this Orbital Velocity News Blurb. If you'd like me to do more of these, let me know in the comments below and be sure to give the video a like. Also, if you want to learn more about the Cygnus spacecraft or how it is launched into space, you can watch these two videos right here. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, at Astra.